This man right here, ladies and gentlemen, is Emery Tate, a chess savant warrior who basically was one of the best chess players in the United States, period, possibly even the world. And of course, his sperm spawned two individuals, Andrew and Tristan Tate. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you might have heard of who these guys are, and boy, I went down this rabbit hole pretty deep. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to understand, Andrew Tate's been blowing all the way up for the last two, three months over TikTok, which explains why I'm a little late to the party. I don't really sit down there, and the only reason I know about this is my buddy Kyle was the one who introduced me to Andrew Tate. One night, we were just sitting playing a game of Factorio, and once I went down the Andrew Tate rabbit hole, I watched a few compilations, and I was like, this can't be real. The best way to describe Andrew Tate is, this is the kind of guy that goes on poll and he's like, you know, these, I feel this. These people are on to something. Andrew Tate's the kind of guy that's sitting in your entire friend circle and then, you know, you're just chilling, doing nothing. And he's the guy that goes up and says, I don't understand why they don't put the Special Olympics on Comedy Central. Now, of course, the absurd statement that is, people in the room probably go, <laughs> oh, you wacky boy right there. To which Andrew Deadface looks you right in the eye and says, it wasn't a joke. Now, the word misogynist could best be described according to a quick Google search is a person who dislikes, despises, or is pr strongly prejudiced against women. Of course, I feel like these definitions should get a uh, picture representation because both Andrew and Tristan Tate match it. And of course, hey, why shouldn't it? They're pretty much self-admitted at this point. Now, of course, to start off with, I'm going to show you some outlandish mentions and, and show you just why Andrew Tate's been blown up all over the YouTube Shorts TikTok algorithm. Now, Andrew Tate's big benefit is his amazing charisma. This man can literally speak a mile a minute and make an absolute point sound cogent, even when it really isn't. And when he's not debating with geniuses like XQC and Aiden Ross. Now, of course, in a lot of these cases, Tate is debating on the principles of being red-pilled, of being a man. So let's get into this whole uh, scenario. Andrew Tate explains to women why, why females shouldn't sleep around. I gotta listen to this one from our boys at Million Motivations. Let's listen to this. Female promiscuity has always, across every culture that's ever existed, been frowned upon. If you are a Absolutely, you are cavemen, you understand. That is not a coincidence. It's because females are designed to meet a man, get pregnant, fall in love with said man. If you keep sleeping with X dude, X dude, yeah, X dude, oh, hold on. plan B's, taking that the morning after pill, that cheapens you. It doesn't matter if a man slept with 20 girls or 200 girls. He is still the man. If a woman slept with 200 men, she is worth less. Damn. This is the basis of the Bag. game. No man is going to marry a woman that 200 men slammed and threw to the street. Now, if you haven't caught on, the Andrew Tate debate strategy is talk really fast, speak really loud, and hopefully you'll look like the smartest person in the room. Throw in some anecdotes, lived in experiences, and I don't know, maybe some biological fact, you know, slightly mixed in with a whole bunch of misogyny. Maybe you might get through. Now, ladies listening into the room that were just sitting there and didn't walk out, have some self-respect. If you're a guy talk like that, red flags all over the room. Young ladies watching, if a guy talks like that, get out of there. Chances are you're not gonna have a good relationship or anything fruitful with a guy like that. Now, of course, to get back to the idea of like value, you know, sleeping around, all that nonsense, Andrew Tate paints it like, hey, if you're a man, that's totally cool. If you're a chick, you suddenly lose all your value. See, this is things that nobody's experienced in the real fucking world yet because Andrew Tate's talking to a bunch of young guys that haven't really gotten past anything. They don't have jobs. They don't really have anything going on in their life. They're trying to look at the quickest, fastest way to success. And they see a guy that has some success, uses, this guy uses image intimidation and basically tries to pass it off like he's got all the secrets. You know, at the end of the day, all right, let me just tell you something. In the real world, all right, wouldn't Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate, wouldn't the value of a man also drop to potential partners, male or female if they're also known to be sleeping around isn't it alpha and trad to also you know just be a normal guy focus on yourself and if you find a partner man woman realize that you also at one point also have a mom too and you gotta you know show some respect right like if you're gonna date a chick and you're gonna have kids with them and you're gonna start a family isn't it also ideal you don't sleep around and 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 whatnot you 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 take to actually making money you take to raising your children and treating your partner right isn't that the true trad alpha mentality because realistically sleeping around just shows that you really don't have any place to put down roots or you're not truly able to commit to actual serious things which shows how much of a beta kid you actually still are 
But of course, that's just me saying it. Then again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of refutation you have to make. Talking to Andrew Tate is pointless because Andrew Tate literally will just not take any of this to heart. Anybody can talk to him, the smartest people. Realistically, the actual call to action here is trying to speak to his audience that he's trying to hit. If you're somebody that follows Andrew Tate and you want to be this alpha traditional guy, this is the last person you should be hearing. And again, before we even jump into that, you have to look beyond the misogyny and look at the history of this person's character and their actual behaviors on the internet and in their professional life i like this one too this is even wilder so this is where like andrew tate talks about his grandma and why every when they were having a family reunion everyone was impressed that grandma herself was a mega breeder box listen to this one they all had a bunch of kids blah 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 i stood there and looked at my 93 year old grandmother and there was a room a whole room full with maybe 70 people that came from that one woman isn't that remarkable yeah. that nobody cared about her career Nobody asked what job she did. Nobody asked how many times she went to the club. Nobody asked if she had time to go to festivals. No. Now, beyond the weird, uh, you know, uh, facial expressions of the women here, obviously discomforted with this reality checking, ladies, once again, run away. It really disgusts me to see how Andrew Tate views their own grandmother. You know, if you're not concerned about your grandmother's lived-in experiences, her career, her life, before she ever had children, maybe that just makes you a really shitty person, not asking your own family member about that. You know, when I look at my grandmother or my grandfather or anybody in my family, I'm looking at them as a whole person. But I have to ask the people that follow Andrew Tate, the top G's, if you will. How could this logic not be applied the other way around? You know, imagine if you had a guy that never had children. Would you suddenly invalidate them and their worth? What if both men and women, let's say in this case, both A and B, achieved an amazing thing in their life, changed the world for the better, you know, left behind an amazing legacy, had a great career, started an amazing business? Is them not having children by any stretch of their imagination suddenly invalidating their worth? You know, if you think like that, you have a really shitty mentality and a really shitty viewpoint on people in general. In this case, it proves wholeheartedly anybody that believes this way is a completely immature person with no understanding of the real world. Now, I like reading the comments to some of these, like, you know, uh, some, of the, some of these, like, ret pill uh, videos right here. She wants to be a doctor. Imagine, miss, do whatever the fuck I want, performing a triple bypass surgery on you. Yeah, it's not like people don't age past their 20s and grow and mature. But, of course, let's entertain this comment for one second. Imagine this person goes to, uh, you know, medical school, becomes a cardiologist, starts performing these triple bypass surgeries. You think they're actually going to be allowed to do this without any form of training and certification? Clearly, if they passed and became a doctor, they're good enough to perform that surgery on you. So this becomes a completely moot point. I'd argue what makes someone happy is community, which can be achieved through having kids. But that isn't the only way. My great aunt never had kids, but she was a great support system for the whole family and everybody loved her. It didn't matter that she didn't have any children. Community can also be achieved through clarity and making a difference in the world. <laughs> Not to Andrew there. Pure facts. I work for a woman that chose a career over having children. She considers her pets as her children. You can tell that she's going through a midlife crisis at the moment. No kids to pass down her and her husband's genes and legacy. And it's too late for her to have kids. Instead, she keeps chasing frivolous thrills to convince herself she's still youthful. So again, the anime profile picture in this case believes that this person, clearly who has picked their career over the, over having children, treats their pets as animals, is going through this mid- or looks to go through this midlife crisis, hasn't confirmed it what whatsoever, and of course, hasn't come to realize that everybody is different. Some people just have different belief sets in life. Some people choose to live their life in a much more different way. It's not as binary and simple as you may think. And again, could this logic also just be applied to men that have chosen a career and then have decided to completely forego having a family. This kind of midlife crisis depression could spawn in both genders if we're going by this logic. Again, I don't understand why these people just can't look at it both ways. I don't understand how that happens, and I just want to present that as, as the question, if you will. I like this one. Why men shouldn't have women friends. Let's watch this one. No, no, no. I'll, I'll just tell you why, personally. You I ask have, the men. I have I have zero female friends. Okay. That does not mean I'm not polite to women. doesn't mean I'm not female acquaintances, right? doesn't mean I can't meet all of you and say hello to you and see you on the street and say hello to you, etc. But the idea of having a female friend, someone I hang out with often, who is my friend and we're purely platonic, mm -hmm. is garbage. It's okay. garbage because... As a man, I'm spending 99% of my energy finding a sexual partner. And and any partner, no, but any partner of mine who I'm also having sex with, my girlfriend, my wife, whoever it may be, she is my friend. There's no benefit from female 
friendship outside of the friendship I'm gonna get from my partner. Truthfully, it can really be the same the other way around. If you have a man and you truly love him and he's your guy, you shouldn't really need other dudes. That's the truth, you shouldn't. But now I kept all that context in there so nobody could say that I cut anything out. Now it's just weird to hear this. Again, I like to ask the fans of this guy how this makes any logical sense. It really shows a stunted view of the real world. Again, imagine, you know, as a man, you have to spend 99% of your energy finding another person to bang. Now, of course, if you're sitting outside in the real world, like I, I, I go to work, I, I have plenty of male and female friends and coworkers, people that that I consider my friends. Obviously, if I have friends of the opposite gender, it doesn't make them more important to me, you know, romantically than my actual girlfriend. Obviously, real people in the real world are gonna have plenty of friends from both sides. I don't understand this weird view. And again, it's a really non-alpha view of people who are like, hey, I have this friend, you know, she's a woman, Clearly, we can't just have a platonic normal friendship. Clearly, we can't talk about hobbies or, you know, stuff that we do aside from work or anything. Or we can't hang out in general. Unless, of course, there's some deep, dark sexual tension. It's like some weird biology class, some basic shit that you're implying. Not, not adding to the fact that human beings are actual creatures that go beyond just base carnal instincts. Again, I like to ask anybody that follows this guy... All right, again, what is the point that the guy's trying to make? It really just shows how much of a stunted worldview you have to have to believe this. And again, that's the general audience Andrew is hitting. Based on Andrew's logic, if I grab this $20 bill with Andrew Jackson, I should probably throw that away because I'm getting a little gay. Let's get into the idea of Andrew Tate's lifestyle, okay? Now, Andrew Tate's the kind of guy, if you go to his channel, has a channel known as tatespeech.com. Now, Andrew Tate is a pretty prominent YouTuber with half a million plus subscribers where he talks about, you know, important things like, hey guys, here's how to get out of the matrix, how the new world order works, the addressing all the rumors, which there are a lot of and we'll get to, emergency meetings, and the worst things about being rich. And, uh, you know, are there really anything, is there really anything bad, Andrew? Come on now. The, ma the man knows how to clickbait you into something. Now, there's no doubt that Andrew Tate will use things like image intimidation to show that he has a nice place, nice car, nice everything, good body, and all these things. And of course, no doubt with all of these benefits, image intimidation works because the people that follow Andrew Tate look at everything that he has and says, this guy probably is a decent authority. You know, when he's driving his Bugatti in front of the various other supercars that he owns at the Tate compound with a goddamn samurai standing at the door, you know that this guy actually, you know, probably has some, pro probably knows a few things about the things that he preaches you know it's kind of like when elon musk talks about a cryptocurrency people will believe it because elon talked about it and elon's one of the richest the richest guy in the world probably knows a few things image intimidation works in a lot of these sectors especially when you're selling courses which we'll get to now of course while there's plenty of youtube videos that talk about all of his crazy shenanigans there's a lot of i guess you could say history around andrew tate's backstory for instance, Andrew Tate is a very, very good kickboxer. From all I've seen in his entire career, he has a pretty established thing where he's got like 78 wins to nine losses. I'm no kickboxer myself, but that's that 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 that's pretty good. However, it says the section's factual history accuracy is disputed. But of course, one more thing that's factually disputed is the claim of how this guy actually got kicked off of one of the reality TV shows he was on. Now, he was on Big Brother. I think it was UK. I don't really know anything about what goes on in Big Brother. I'm not a big reality TV person. But this is one infamous clip that basically started floating around. When I saw about, when I saw Andrew Tate a while back when I was first introduced, this is the first clip that showed up on Twitter and various social media platforms. And it was one of the more disgusting clips to find. It's a clip of Andrew Tate basically taking a belt and hitting this one woman over here. Now, when I first saw this, I was immediately wondering who's filming this, what's going on. Now, when I saw this, it didn't really have any audio attached to it, and when I looked closer into it, one of the actual responses and rebuttals to this was the fact that this was a consensual BDSM roleplay scenario. In fact, it appears this blonde woman over here actually showed up and basically said this was effectively just roleplay. Uh, of course, speaking directly to the camera, hi everyone, I just want to say something about the video that has been released recently of me and my ex-boyfriend Andrew Tate. He is still a great friend, and what you saw in the video is just something we used to do. It was pure game, he is a great guy, and he would never hurt anybody, unless he is professionally fighting. I just want to let you know that this has all been a huge misunderstanding. I already got kicked out of the house because of it, which I find really unfair, because it was just a pure game. That's what we used to do. Now, of course, one clip that's completely sort of flown under the radar until I looked even further into it 
was this one specifically, where it was a different girl, it seems, with black hair, where Andrew Tate is actually pointing out bruises. And I want to warn you, this is some really dark stuff to look through. I'm going to basically cut out most of this video, and I'm going to let you play the audio. Because, again, I'm not here to talk to Andrew Tate. He's not somebody that's going to listen. But I am talking to the fan base that vehemently follows this guy. What you're about to hear is not alpha behavior. If this is some this is some really dark dark stuff. So again, listen carefully, listen closely. So you've got the black hair, different person it seems. They've got a blur on their face obviously, so I can't identify. But again, just listen to it real quick. With what? You have a f belt cuz you're a jerk. Show me the bruises. One. Two, three. Oh, baby. Oh, poor thing. I have an idea. Have my ideas? You want my ideas? That's right. Lock the door, you. You knew I was gonna beat the out of you. If you behaved, I wouldn't have to hit you, would I? Get out. Now, of course, to the people watching, uh, this is clearly a door that's been locked. And I just want to wonder what the story behind this is. Clearly, somebody that's engaging in, like, some consensual play is now locking doors and obviously seems, like, distraught completely in this clip. This is not alpha behavior. This is some disgusting, decrepit shit that you come across on the internet. And if you're somebody that respects or looks up to a person like this, you seriously need to grow up and actually seek some real help in your life or some real actual figures to follow. Because this isn't it, chief. This is just disturbing shit. If you're somebody that thinks this is ha-ha funny, 99% of the world looks at this kind of shit in disgust. And that's the right response to have. But again, this is just one dark aspect. There are more to uncover about Andrew Tate. There's allegations of human trafficking. And of course, one has to look into this alpha male's earning and how he actually made his money and his fortune. And just exactly how he continues to fund his lifestyle by preying on the individuals that are the most weakest and susceptible to his bullshit. But of course, a big bulk of his money actually comes from running a webcam empire, which actually, according to uh, a little mirror.co.uk article, basically brothers make millions using webcam girls to sell sob stories to desperate men. Sounds about legit. To which we're actually going to read a bit of an anecdote over here. Now here they said, Andrew said one model they took to Bucharest used the name Chloe. Viewers were told she was in London, making her seem more attainable to UK men. Andrew said $4 a minute to keep her company was a good deal. However, she made her real money because men fell in love with her and believed her fake story and tipped thousands to keep her attention and stop other men seeing her. Even when the face of the personality was sleeping, our girls behind the scene would use Chloe's phone and constantly work on the relationships with her boys, boy boyfriends. So just from the very basics of this webcam empire that it seems, it really appears that uh, Andrew Tate, this alpha man, is a pimp. So once again, I asked the fan base that follows this man is, is a, is a pimp worth respecting? You know, if you ask 99% of the general male population, absolutely not. This is one of those career paths that absolutely nobody can respect. Being a middleman, a pimp, especially in the adult entertainment industry, a very seedy entertainment industry to begin with, is quite disgusting. But the way that it's described here, it really just seems like a fraudulent empire to goad absolute weak-willed individuals out of cash. So at the same time, this guy's trying to tell you about how to be a man, while it appears that his largest empire, or one of the things that put him on the map, got him that Bugatti, so to speak, is an empire that preyed upon the same people that he is apparently preaching to. How can you respect a man like this? He's like a drug dealer that apparently knows that what he's doing is wrong, but continues to do it. Absolutely beta behavior. And again, I'm only using alpha and beta because we're pertaining to this topic. Anything beyond this, I think they're complete jokes of definitions. To which, when you ask these guys about their business, they literally will say, it's a total scam. The model has just their hands on a keyboard that isn't even plugged in. 
I have real professionals who are fluent in English behind the scenes getting men hooked, finding out their interest, the name of their dog. A guy will come online and say, how Sparky? It's an operation of professionals who lure these men in. Tristan said 80% of money earned by British models came from the men in the United Kingdom. But if a model is Slovakian, 80% comes from Americans. He said he once tried to stop a man spending his 20,000 pound inheritance on Chloe, but gave up when the punter came back weeks later and gave the money to another woman. Men will give all that they have. He said, I've seen men sell cars, TVs with Chloe. This guy's grand passed away and they were waiting for the sale of the house. When the house was sold, he'd get 20,000 and promised it to Chloe to pay for her fake financial problem. We had his phone number. It was only a year into the industry. I called the guy. I said, hello, my name is Tristan Tate. I know you used myfreecams.com. Let me tell you, Chloe works at a studio I own. Financially, she's fine. Keep your 20,000. He thanked me, but then weeks later, the man visited another site and Tristan and told staff to take him for everything he's got. Tristan said he runs a legitimate business and if they abuse it, it's their problem. So of course, it's kind of like peddling gambling, right? Like this is where I think it's even worse than somebody who peddles gambling or drugs or any of these vices to people. When they act with the moral superiority that, hey, this is a bad thing, but I'm still going to partake in it. I would, I have more respect for the person that knows they're a scumbag and doesn't pretend or like you to know, do anything about it. They're like, yes, I do promote addictive vices. I don't give a fuck about it, okay? Get addicted all you want. Looking at old uh, Twitter archives, this is the scale of webcams explained in a single screenshot. So basically shows 339 people are watching one stream out of 1,609 models, right? It is your friends, brothers, fathers, husband, and uncles, men you know, do this, I guarantee it. Old and young, rich and poor, the allure of beautiful women willing to do as they say is impossible to resist. Better than selling crack! Shit, I even sell a course teaching men how. In excess of two million men in any one moment are indulging in this kind of entertainment. My estimate is an underestimate, if anything. It's made me a multi-millionaire, and I am not ashamed. My girls are well paid and happy to put on the show. Literally, it's a pimp. <laughs> What's really wild is when you look at some of these guys, like for instance, another banger tweet from Tristan. If you don't fuck at least two virgins a year, you are unqualified to call yourself a player. Running through the same old circle of hoes as everybody else? Cool, but I'm better than you. I'm a different beast. It gets kind of weird when you look at some of the Tate's relationship with women, but these tweets kind of explain it. The old and again, the pattern of these tweets is just creepy. The oldest virgin I've ever had it with was 26. Strict orthodox. Stay away for, staying away from men. Kept her hair, skin, voice, mind, soul, everything. Rare finds. And this is just one of many. And it really paints a picture of how these people perceive women and relationships and just how creepy it actually is. Now, obviously, beyond just running one of these empires, Andrew Tate has a bit of controversy regarding the law and several charges being run against him. Now, I've been looking really diligently amongst all of this because there are some really serious allegations, one of them being that he is an alleged human trafficker. Now, I don't like to use that term completely and apply it to anybody. There's some serious research that needs to be applied. When I think of human traffickers, I think of scumbags like Jeffrey Epstein. And human trafficking is, without a doubt, one of the most serious serious crimes ever. It is in fact one of the worst crimes imaginable. And if you get caught doing it, in my personal opinion, the death sentence is just a bit too lenient. But of course, let's go on a little bit. Now, of course, Andrew Tate's been sort of marred with some of these allegations, but of course, he's also been marred with a lot of charges that have hit him all the way in the United Kingdom, which is one of the countries that he holds citizenship in. So let's listen to one of Andrew's explanations and just go beat by beat from there. So I was like, who are you? And they're like, you're under arrest for a suspicion of assault of this dumb hoe. And I'm like, I was like wait, this is a dumb hoe? <laughs> they didn't, but I'm going to protect her anonymity because I'm a nice guy. Dumb hoe. So I was like, I didn't touch that dumb hoe. Yeah. And uh, the police were like, well, look, don't talk to us. We just have to bring you in, talk to the investigator. So I went to the investigator. They kept me in a cell for a day and a half. They sent officers to raid my house, took all my electronics, took all my phones, all my laptops, went through my Damn. entire personal life, found 11 new things to raise charges against me for. It's unrelated because the original case got dropped because she had no evidence and she was lying because all the other girls in the house went to on and my behalf. And testified and said, against she's, her. She's lying. Yeah, right. So they're like, ah, okay, but we've been through his life. He has a Lambo and a bunch of pussy and he's enjoying himself and that's not allowed in the Western world. Yeah. So we've been through his life and we found 11 new reasons to raise crap against him. Mm. So I had 11 new charges, blah, blah, blah. And I just woke up one day and said, I cannot live in this kind of, I will not live under a government that will do this to me when I've done nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. So I had to leave and go somewhere. And by coincidence, I had a fight coming up in Romania. So I went and fought in Romania. And I just thought, you know what? 
I'll hang around here for a few months. Mm. And then boom, five years later, I'm, I'm still there. So that now, of course, I'm not here to talk to Tate at this point. I think that's a lost cause, but I want to talk to the people that actually put this guy up on a pedestal. Let's go through the chain of events like normal, rational adults real quickly. The guy gets, uh, you know, arrested. He gets into trouble with the UK police. The UK police detain him for a day and a half, but they take all of the electronics and systems that he has. And after they have taken all the electronics, they've obviously processed that through their own system. And they've found up 11 new charges to bring to the table, 11 various different new charges. And of course, according to the uh, you know internet and various research around and various reports, it seems that some of them may be related to things like sexual assaults. So how is it that these are new 11 charges that have been brought up and uh, all of a sudden, you know, they came out literally after they looked through the skewed electronics. You know, it's really weird and fishy whenever that happens. Like when your systems get taken, your hard drives get looked through, and all of a sudden they can find 11 new charges. But of course, he moves to Romania, which of course, if you know anything about Romania, Romania, if you look at the Corruption Perceptions Index, this is actual research that is brought up by Transparency International, you can find out they rank literally almost every country from 100 to 0. 100 being highly, like, non-corrupt, a clean country country, you know, absolutely sterling, all the way down to zero, basically being one of the highest corrupt countries that you could find. Now, of course, if you look into it, for example, Canada, my country, has actually been losing its corruption perception uh, over time. So back in 2012, Canada was considered to be 84, which is pretty high. And all the way down in 2021, we're rated as 74. So clearly, in the Corruptions Perception Index, Canada has become a more corrupt country. Now, of course, as you go down into the situation, you'll find that the United States, for instance, went from 73 all the way back in 2012, all the way down to 67 as of 2021. Of course, there's various factors to affect all of this. In certain cases, it can also go up. Like, for instance, the Seychelles went from 52 all the way up to 70, which is a pretty massive boost into the entire equation. Of course, then you go all the way down to where our buddy uh, is chilling. And if you go to Romania, for instance, Romania has gone from 44, went down a little bit, went to 46, 48, 47, all the way down and harmonizing around 45. So clearly, this is not a very, you know, safe country. It is a corrupt country. It's easier to access corruption in Romania. And you don't have to listen to my words for it. You can listen right from Andrew Tate. And this is where I'm going to play the whole context and sort of debunk and talk about it together. I find it offensive that a police officer in England will stop me for speeding and then refuse to take a bribe and pretend that... that no, 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 but I'll tell you why. Because he'll sit there and go, no, this is the law, law and order, and pretend that the law means something and, and fuck me over. But if you're a billionaire or if you're Boris Johnson, you can go to Epstein's Island, you can fucking throw parties during COVID, you know the fuck you want, right? So the whole the whole idea of law and order is a lie. The whole idea of it's bullshit. It's just about if you're high enough, you can throw it all away. I'd rather be in a society where if I'm in Prague and they stop me for speeding, they say, bro, you were speeding. No, here's 50 bucks. All right, cool, cool. Bye, bye. If corruption exists, which it does, let us all play. Why do only they get to play and I don't get to play? I find it offensive that... Now, of course, Andrew is referring to the fact that corruption exists all over the world. Now, of course, this is where Andrew says one thing that's logical, and then he mixes in with a whole bunch of bullshit. Obviously, corruption exists in every single facet of the world. And yes, corruption is accessible to people that have certain power, certain funds, and certain, you know, connections. But that's not a good thing, anybody would say. We should try to strive to have no corruption whatsoever. He's trying to talk about the fact that there's people like Jeffrey Epstein, and, you know, people that are doing some crazy stuff things in the world. And obviously, when we find out the true extent of it and it gets brought into the light, which it always does in the end, thankfully, those people get taken to trial, those people get convicted, those people get their entire images completely ruined. Now, of course, corruption exists. There's bad people all over the world. Obviously, we should try to stamp it out as much as we can. It's not that, yes, corruption exists, therefore, hey, let everyone access it, make it completely equal and free. No, that's not how it works. Clearly, Andrew Tate moves to Romania because for him, it appears that accessing this corruption might be a little bit easier than uh, in the United Kingdom, where he just doesn't have enough funds or power to do so, or the United States. So, of course, at the end of the day, corruption is bad, and it should be stamped out everywhere in the world, not freely accessed by every Every scumbag you could ever find. That's the healthy take to have. And I want to ask the people that follow him, what's wrong with the take that I have right here? Do you disagree? And if you do disagree, why should you access corruption everywhere? Probably 40% of the reason I'm 40%? Romania, okay. in Eastern Europe, none of this garbage flies. 
If you're going to go to the police and say he raped me back in 1988, then so we should have done something about it then. If you're going to go to the police and say he raped me yesterday, say, okay, if you've got physical evidence, all right, is there CCTV proof? Where did it happen? Okay, let's go interview him right now. And if it wasn't really right, oh, that's like, oh, we went to the club, we got drunk, she agreed to go back to my house, we started having sex, and then we carried on having sex, and then we had sex, and she didn't say anything wrong, and then she texted me afterwards, and I didn't text back, and now she's saying I raped her. The police would be like, okay, she's an idiot, bye. But it, it, no, not in the West. In the West, you can tell them that exact story, you're still fucked. You're fucked in the West. When people say, why did you in Romania? And I explain my five reasons. One of them is the Me Too era. They go, oh, well, you're a rapist. I say, no, I'm not a fucking rapist. But I like the idea of being able to just say, to, to do what I want. I like being free. And if you're a man living in England or Germany or America or any of the Western world right now, you've decided to live in a country where any woman, any ex, any fucking bitch who works at Greg's who you bought a pasty from, at some point in the future can destroy your life. This Me Too era bullshit has not protected women. It's just destroyed the safety of men. Now, is it a rather weird thing to say that 40% of the reason you're moving to this one country with a uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty, uh, pretty high corruption index is all of a sudden, you know, because Western men are living in a country where anytime, anywhere, they can have their lives ruined by a false allegation. Now, don't get me wrong. Obviously, false allegations are a thing. They're real. It happens, unfortunately, and it ruins it for actual women that have been completely harmed. But of course, to understand with the situation, how is it that this guy just wants to go to a country where for him, it's such a big deal. 40% of the reason is because you don't want to get caught up in these charges. I'm going to wager and say that most individuals do not get caught up in charges like this whatsoever. Um, I would say that given a normal, healthy, you know, relationships that I've had in my life, I've never ever come across a situation where an ex-girlfriend of mine has suddenly brought up these weird charges on me or whatnot. This is something that, you know, I can say from my personal experience, and even from the close friends that I've had who've had relationships, nobody has come out, and nobody lives in fear of having a false allegation. What is really fearful is coming across guys like this that are fearful of any allegation that's hitting towards them. I don't know whether they're, like, understanding that their activities in the past may have set themselves up for something like this in the future, and that's why they're pissed scared at the moment, but for somebody like this who just wants to be free and do whatever they want what does that even mean what do you mean do whatever you want what so that if these things come up you can be in a country where you can access the corruption and pay somebody off so that nothing ever goes uh beyond that be, beyond its scope what what does this even mean i want to ask the people who look up to this guy is this a normal rational reason for an alpha male to move to the other side of the world just so they can is 40 percent of the reason is so that they can get away from false allegations i don't understand if like that's an alpha thing if that's like normal you know in reality land in non cuckoo land we consider that pretty fucking red flag territory to begin with and any guy that's using this as an excuse typically most other normal men will look at a guy like that and think ah scumbag but of course you know that's just normality hitting you and i want to ask the fan base for this guy how is this defensible how is this like a cool thing how is this alpha so to speak this sounds like the most beta near criminal shit that i've ever heard of but we'll get to criminality in a bit now, of course, the human trafficking stuff comes into an actual article that was posted uh, just this year even. So this is from a Romanian page. And now this is a very serious allegation, of course. Very, very serious. Again, human trafficking, very, very, very serious crime. So, of course, I want to do my due diligence and look into how this is going. Uh, from what I understand, from what I've seen, this is still an active investigation. So I've heard numerous cases like, hey, the case got dropped and all this, blah, 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 blah. I have not found that anywhere where the case has actually been dropped by Romanian authorities or even the United States services that have been involved into this process as well. Of course, with cases like this, it's slow going and information regarding human trafficking cases, very like it's, it's going to be a while before you hear any updates to this kind of stuff. But of course, let's go read into it. So this is the uh, Romanian page, which I'm going to go through it. I'm going to go uh, throw it into a uh, translator and we're going to look at the English version of it. So there's going to be some um, there's going to be some translation issues, but hopefully nothing too massive. The police descended with masks on the villa of the fighter Tristan Tate, ex-boyfriend of Bianca. I'm not even going to try. The British millionaire allegedly kidnapped two women to exploit them. So, of course, they've got an entire video one could watch over here of Romanian authorities. Like, they're all dressed up, ready to raid the place. It was a full-on raid. They've got their Tate logo with the chess piece, and they've got numerous supercars lined up. You've got the actual owners walking around. I think that's one of the Tates. But you just got law enforcement sitting around. So this was captured. They've actually had real authorities go on there. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that the American State Department got involved. So let's go read through this whole thing. 
The ter Information and Public Relations Office within the Organized Crime and Terrorism Investigation Dist Directorate announced on Tuesday, on April 11th, the prosecutor's office attached to the Buftia District Court ordered the refusal in favor of DICOT, central structure in a case in investigations were being carried out under the cis aspect or I think that might be a suspect, of committing the crime of illegal deprivation of liberty. Okay, so just keeping people chained up, Jesus Christ. C Central structure prosecutors heard several witnesses during the night of 11-12-04-2022 in order to clarify the factual situation. The investigation is being continued, so it's still active, by the investigation of organized crime and terrorism, central structure, with the support of BCCO of Bucharest, the criminal investigation being carried out in REM. So the mother of one of the girls who was in the villa owned by the Tate brothers at the time they broke the mask gave statements to journalists. My child is a good child. He has never caused me any problems. I always asked her if she had a boyfriend and she said, no, mom, I'm just going to college. She's a very good child. I think that's why he bullied her because she's too naive. He told me he was going, at, he, he, she told me, I, I think that's what it is, she was going out for a drink with a friend. It seemed strange to me from the beginning. Since I saw pictures of the girl he said he was, she said she was dating, I saw that the girl had a more dubious figure. Um, I didn't like it, but I said not to say anything to my child. The translation's a little bit wonky, but you can kind of understand the story. The mom is painting the child to be a good kid. Obviously, she wouldn't get caught up into this, but she was probably allured by the money and uh, she was alerted by these characters themselves. The, Ifla, the Ilfov police were notified on Monday by a representative of the Diplomatic Security Office of the United States Embassy in Bucharest regarding the fact that there is information according to which in a building located on Washington Street in the town of Voluntari, Emma Ida Gabby, age 21, an American citizen, would have been detained. According to sources close to the investigation, the Ilfov prosecutors got in touch with the Diplomatic Security Bureau, and after obtaining additional information, the police officers filed an ex officio report regarding the commission of a possible crime of illegal deprivation of liberty. Now, of course, it seems like there was an Ameri a Romanian woman also in prison in the building, in addition to the American one they were going for. So clearly, unless there was like, you know, an American person that was allegedly being detained in this scenario, again, I'm using allegations, simply because we don't have a conviction and this hasn't gone completely out to court. But if there was a Romanian woman alone, we could understand through the corruptions index that we saw earlier, the police may not have been as favorable. It was only until an American, the American government got involved that the Romanian government, you know, had to basically listen. At the end of the day, all right, uh, I guess you could say the larger gear turns the smaller gear, whatever you could say. And it was because of the fact that the American government really got involved. In my personal opinion, I think the Romanians got involved too. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, these are charges, these are allegations, and it's an ongoing investigation. Now, you know, one of the things that I like to cover when it comes to stuff like this is covering the truth and the facts, because when it comes to the fans of, of the Tates, all right, they will take anything that the mainstream media will say, anything that could be constantly like, you know, misconstrued as a lie. And they will take that running. You know, if it turns out that this is, you know, there wasn't a case of human trafficking whatsoever, everyone on the internet that's been calling this guy a trafficker, a, a, a seller, if you will, will now be brandished as a liar in the fans of this guy. And then you'll never be able to convert them in that case. Look, it's safe to say there is an ongoing investigation. And it's definitely suspect to wonder what's going on with the U.S. government. And it's definitely suspicious to see such a raid being descended down. And of course, two people being reclaimed is another thing. But of course, let's Let's get Andrew Tate's side of the story. See how that one fits in. Because that's the nature of the internet. But you know what? Fine. It's Cons, fine. Tell, we say could, I'm a human trafficker. We could save the world from an asteroid. And they would still and say, Ethan, well, they're human Ethan traffickers. will sit there in between his eighth and ninth taco. I think they run a sex ring. You know what's actually funny about since that thing? I, I do run a sex ring. It's called my harem of girlfriends. It, you, you know what's They're funny? all willing participants. Exactly. What's funny is this. <laughs> one, that there's dudes out there so soy. Imagine that. You 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 catch your girl on Instagram at our house. Yeah, she says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they made me come. They here. made me come to this big and, party, and she's dancing in the videos. She's dancing. And the, she's the, dancing. Police, the police have the videos. She's dancing around, twerking. And you sit there and go, "Oh my God, she's kidnapped." <laughs> Are you okay, baby? 
<laughs> I'm gonna save you! <laughs> now, awkward laugh in the end aside. Now, of course, uh, the Tates would say that this is clearly a girl that decided to fly over, join their party, and uh, her significant other noticed her on Instagram and decided to contact authorities. Now, the entire idea of, like, not being under duress, oh, somebody just dancing around, I guess it's all fine and dandy. You know, this is the kind of stuff that I read on the articles that constantly got quoted over this stuff, too. Uh, there was one that I was looking at where they were literally looking over CCTV footage of, like, these women at the Tate compound, and they were basically saying, hey, these guys are super rich and wealthy. Why would they, why, <laughs> clearly these women could get to the front door, why couldn't they run away? Now, of course, in scenarios in scenarios that involve trafficking it's not always as cut and dry like that okay just because somebody is dancing and happy doesn't mean that there's not an element of coercion that goes on i'm not saying that it applies necessarily to this case but to simply just say haha somebody could go to the front door they could run away easily um i mean run away where if you were actually being coerced imagine if you had your documentation taken away imagine if you know you're going up against more powerful people what are you going to do run away contact the authorities in a corrupt country i mean logically think these things through but of course let's get back to the entire scenario this guy all right who notices his girlfriend who i guess is missing and is in some party in some other side of the world why would they suddenly decide to contact not just the authorities but the u.s state department to get involved into it now the u.s state department gets involved they're not saying anything because investigations are ongoing and all of a sudden you have romanian authorities actually sending out raids at the behest it seems from u.s agents i mean there's a lot to really unpack here and it goes beyond simply laughing it off i mean i'm not saying that this person is a trafficker so to speak but even if you look inside their various other websites and if you look inside their various other um ventures if you will even if you go to cobra's website or tate's website it came out where like he's talking about his empire his webcam business and while i can't find this now on the website i'm sure that there's an archive this way i found through uh through reddit if you will like people were screenshotting his websites beforehand he literally goes off and says hey most of my webcams you know these these women are not from professional adult spheres uh a lot of them are girlfriends that i've made and i've pimped them out on the internet effectively and he doesn't realize how bad this sounds especially when it comes on to an ongoing investigation especially an investigation regarding human trafficking again to the people that follow it i have to ask you the question from the beginning is it really alpha to be a pimp which is one of the lowest rung jobs any man could do but of course even beyond that you know there's a lot of stuff to unpack over here and for people who are just simply going to brush off these trafficking allegations it's one thing to understand this is an ongoing current investigation so who knows what comes out of it maybe tate is completely absolved maybe he isn't i do want to say for the people that are definitely critical of tate very critical to take it easy with just simply saying this person is a 100 percent human trafficker because if the chance comes out that he isn't he's definitely going to use this as ammunition against the mainstream media or the people that are against him to further incite the fans of his to believe you know nothing that you would say nothing that people who are actually critical of tate would say this is an ongoing investigation, but it's definitely okay to say there's some suspect things going on. That said, let's move on. The next wild stage is obviously Andrew's next big business involved getting into the whole casino game. To which, when you actually listen to some of Andrew's connections in Romania, it starts to sound really shady. So, of course, there's been weird speculation that the Tate brothers are involved with the Romanian Mafia. And there's a few videos and clips of Andrew Tate talking where it gets a little suspicious. And listen to this with women naked on the internet who own casinos, who drive around Bucharest, Romania, they own casinos, over $2 million worth of fucking supercars. Everyone's afraid of us. And if anyone did piss us off at any point, even if we didn't want to fuck them up ourselves, we can make one phone call and they'd either be in a ditch or lose their any right to stay here. They'd have some visa issue and get kicked out the country or arrested for no reason and put in a jail cell for months at a time. We are basically- Whoa, 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 whoa. What was number one again? Can we, can we go back in time and listen to that? Hold on a second. Phone call and they'd either be in a ditch or lose their- One phone call and they'd be in a ditch. Almost sounds like this guy has some friends that can make things happen. Almost sounds this guy has like mafia friends that can- Almost sounds like he knows fixers or something. It's super odd listening to that. So, of course, that's something that he's claimed. That's literally from the Tate Speech channel. Of course, even on a live stream with the uh, other, like, uh, Fortnite streamers, he actually mentioned something even suspicious as well. Listen to this. Andrew, have you ever killed someone? What's this Twitch, bro? I can't, I can't be saying certain things on Twitch. So that's I, a yes. It's, it's not a yes. It's not a no. <laughs> oh, so it's just but, uh, yeah. Okay. 
thighs. And it also I depends. Like, if you want me to answer the question professionally, which I will, it also depends, right? Because it depends. Would, would, would having, for example, complete hyperbole, let's say you got a member of your energy team to kill someone would you, and you ordered the hit, would you be the person who killed him? Yes. Okay. In Fortnite, yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> so it's basically, all right, so you're basically playing like Fortnite, but in real life, I get it. No, but, life, but life is a video game, right? We're living in. So beyond just these two streamers listening and entertaining this thing, I have to really ask the question how you can entertain a person that is apparently admitting at least twice that they have the connections in the country and the ability to deal with people in a very violent manner. Sometimes they could take their passport away, sometimes they could be in a ditch in the ground. You know, and I have to ask the people who follow and support this guy, how do you support somebody that has basically aligned themselves with criminals? The people that Andrew Tate may be referring to in this case, the mafia if you will, are no more different than drug dealers, drug pushers, terrorists, actual criminals that commit terrible crimes. To respect a criminal means absolutely putting yourself at such ends of theirs. How Tate can align himself with these kind of people and still be respected by the manosphere, you know, the incels that follow him, you know, the, the, the people who believe this is what being an alpha is about. No, being an alpha is about having a strong moral compass, not aligning yourself with scumbags like this, and basically doing the right thing. What Andrew Tate is doing is running shortcuts, becoming an internet pimp, making millions through using women, basically defrauding men from what we've seen in the past, and uh, effectively aligning himself with the most unsavory types of people. People that harm women, children, men all around the world simply because they can, and they use the easiest way to make money in life. Who Andrew Tate aligns himself with are better off dead. And I also don't really believe that Andrew Tate has these kind of connections, because I feel like if you were connected to any of these criminal fronts, they would not take too kindly to you admitting this in front of millions of people. A person like this, with such a big mouth of theirs, would probably end up dead. So to be real with you, I think this man is kind of A, just flexing to 12-year-olds who think this is somehow badass and haven't grown up, or B, he's really just that stupid. And uh, hopefully, you know, beyond just deep platforming, right, which he has been on Facebook and Instagram, this is actually against the TOS of like YouTube and various other services. I'm not somebody that believes deep platformation sometimes is the key, simply because it pushes a lot of his followers into a more extreme viewpoint. Sometimes they'll be like, ah, this guy was right all along. This is the truth they don't want you to hear. Look at how mainstream media shot him down. Reality, like this stuff should be countered. The children that follow this and the young adults that follow this need to be under, need to be taught Taught that following somebody that aligns himself with the most unsavory types of individuals is not somebody that deserves respect. It's somebody that deserves complete jail time. And again, I just want to ask for the followers, what part of what I just said do you necessarily disagree with? How is this badass and alpha? How is aligning yourselves with criminals somehow the manly thing to do? It's just something I want to ask and I want to hear a refutation to it. Now, if you go to Andrew Tate's CobraTate.com, success is learned. Andrew Tate, world champion kickboxer, grew up broke, and now I'm a multimillionaire. All right, let's go. Teachers are essential. Your net worth is your network. Uh, if you were in a group of 100 ice cream experts and all you spoke about was making ice cream, you'd learn a lot about how to make ice cream. It's the same with money. Sit down with people and learn about making money. That is what it is. Get money. Get women, get fit. People love to say you can accomplish anything. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, that's bullshit. Very few people have the dedication and work ethic to operate in the top 1% of men. Those that do often don't know how to get there. Understand if you're dedicated and ready to work hard, it's not enough. You need to know what to work on, what to dedicate yourself to. I broke the matrix and I'll teach you how. Of course, you can believe a man with image intimidation tactics, like standing in front of your goddamn Lamborghini with a fucking machete, dude. <laughs> These people are not real, but they are. It's insane. So, of course, what'll happen is if you go down even further, it gets even crazier. Tales of Wudan. In a previous life, I lived 5,000 human years atop Wudan Mountain. I remember every lived second. Life is competition. Competition is violence. In many modern forms of competition, we have attempted to water down the violent aspects to replicate violence in the most sanitized way. 
Right, I'm not going to keep reading it. You can read the ebook right here if you really care about it. What he actually does sell, beyond everything, is the Hustlers University 2.0. Can you make money today? No job, but still money arriving into your bank account? Yes or no? Welcome to Hustlers University 2.0, a community where me and dozens of war room soldiers will teach you exactly how to make money. This is a community where you can get access to stock analysis, options play, crypto analysis, DeFi, e-commerce, copywriting, freelancing, flipping, financial planning, business management, and more. What do you mean, and more? Give me some more. Give me everything. Tell me everything here, okay? Sell me on everything. Every professor is verified by me personally. Each of them is making anywhere between $10,000 to $500,000 a month. That's a pretty big range there, Andrew. Jesus. I choose fields that anyone anywhere can do now to get rich. No bullshit, no fluff, just hard-hitting lessons. And it's only $49 to enjoy. It's time to get rich. Hustlers University. And of course, you go over here to Hustlers University and you pay him $49.99 per month, by the way, to join this entire group of people who can learn how to get rich. And of course, he's given a lot of, I guess you could say, proof. Uh, just, I guess men just sit around in Discord all day, <laughs> basically talking about how much they've earned kind of weird of course also beyond that tate's also got the war room and the war room is even wilder the war room is a global network which exists on planet earth looks like some fake ass illuminati dude the war room is a global organization with members bases and influences in over 70 countries the network contains a varied expertise which allows us to exert influence globally <laughs> okay every member has either achieved or is working towards the ultimate goal of all intelligent men freedom in a world of slavery how would joining our network change your life? Of course, let's go down to see how much this costs. Okay, let, let's actually see what's going on. How much to cost to join the war room? $4,147. Jesus Christ. I'm going to call and say that this sounds like Amway for like rich boys who want to jump in and basically figure out people who are getting basically scammed and probably learning how to scam other people. Now, of course, Hustler University 2.0, if you actually just go on to Google and look around, there's plenty of ads that keep getting fed to you. And if I click on one of them right here, Andrew Tate's Hustler University, you can go down and understand just exactly what kind of shit they're trying to teach you. Affiliate marketing, MLM crap, <laughs> Amazon FBA and e-commerce. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We're getting into the real hustling, aren't we? See, the moment you see affiliate marketing and Amazon FBA is the moment you run the fuck away. You see, a lot of these courses that are 50 bucks a month really just give you the most basic bargain bin advice that you could ever imagine, right? And it's the same kind of shit you could take five seconds to Google search and come across. What Andrew Tate is selling you is nothing new. Andrew Tate is basically profiting off of weak-willed individuals who just want to get rich quicker, okay? They want to learn how to hustle. They want to learn how to make money online. They want to learn how to do freelancing and copying, learn how to make money in cryptos and NFTs. And again, these people will say, this is not financial investment advice. They'll tell you how to invest. They'll tell you about real estate. And the funniest part about real estate is you pretty much already kind of have to have fucking a crap ton of money before you try to make anything in that space too. What he's basically teaching you is like, hey, how do rich people just learn how to snowball their money into getting rich? The people who are actually rich in this scenario, okay, do not need courses like this. Just imagine for a second, put this into your head. Why is it, if I'm if I'm the rich guy, why would I teach you how to also be rich? At the end of the day, finances are a giant cake, okay? At the end of the day, the cake is finite. Why the hell would I teach you how to get a slice of cake when I could have the whole goddamn cake to myself? When it, to, when it comes to money, I'm up here to get type three up in this bitch, okay? That's what it comes to. The, anybody that sells you a course is literally profiting off of your gullibility. They're not there to make money for them. They're probably making money on the side, but these courses that they sell you are literally, are literally them siphoning money out of the fucking weak willed out there. You wanna learn how to make money, you wanna learn how to grind, get a financial advisor, get a money manager. That's how it works. They're the ones that can help you. That's how you get rich over time. There ain't no success on getting rich quick unless you start going down some criminal route, which is always gonna end badly. Here's a pretty good like uh, explanation onto this too by one Redditor. So I've explained this before and I'll try to explain it again. The whole point of a paywall is networking. You're paying that money for access. The truth is Andrew Tate is successful because of his boxing and it's alleged he's also involved in illicit dealings. I don't know how true this is. So you need to understand this reality before you spend money. My opinion is Tate is not a successful businessman but a successful influencer. These people are in it for the money because they failed in other business ventures and realize being provocative for clout makes them easy money. 
They are not the people you want to pay to network with. Find self-made millionaires, they're everywhere. Look on YouTube, for example. These people almost never ask for money or sell courses. And these resources are readily available on the internet if you're willing to do the effort. My suggestion is never give these people money. Nothing they have to offer is new. However, if you do spend money, understand you're potentially growing your circle and expanding your networking with like-minded individuals. You'd have a better experience finding a community of people on Reddit than going from there. Most of your problems can be solved if you just know how to navigate what you're trying to succeed in. Absolutely amazing advice right there. And it costs you zero dollars to experience it. Absolutely perfect. So to tie off this entire video, this project's taken me a bit of a, a bit of a while, a week and a half really, uh, just of sitting down and watching this. To be real with you, coming across this person was like laughable because it really looked like a GTA Online character. But of course, the further you dig into it, the more it goes from just misogyny to downright near criminal elements. Now, of course, obviously, to, to get to the you know f summarization of this entire piece, Obviously, Andrew Tate's final goal is to basically spread his message throughout all these social media platforms. If you actually look into all these channels that have kicked up, like, we looked at it earlier in the video, shit like Million Motivations or Tate. What, there are so many unofficial channels that it really does feel like some sort of op is taking place where Andrew Tate benefits from having a bunch of people take his stream content that he's honestly doing through other streamers. Like, streamers jump onto him. Streamers bring him on. They, they, they play him. People like, you know, Aiden Ross, if you will. They platform him. He makes a statement, he makes some speeches, he says about landish shit. People watching that stream clip it, and then they upload it to TikTok and various other first-tier media platforms. It gets spread around through the algorithm. And obviously there's something to consider that even the algorithms constantly keep pushing this kind of content. But so people look at this content, and for Andrew Tate, the most, in, the most like, the best possible case scenario for him is being outlandish, being trending all the time, having these kind of videos made on him, also that one or two people can jump into Hustlers University. Because that's the end goal of this situation, to get people involved into this weird online $50 program where honestly they can learn how to get rich or learn how to get all the women imaginable. Now, Andrew Tate's view on women is obviously misogynistic, obviously something that most normal people with a functional worldview would never agree with. Any actual person you talk to past the age of 18 that has a career, that has kids, that has something together in their life would never agree with something Andrew says. The kind of stuff that he says appeals to individuals that are early in their, you know, in their teenage years or children, you know, people that, you know, are easily molded. And they'll look at a guy that's rich, a guy that has Bugattis and all of his stuff, and they'll probably sit there flexing this man's wealth to other people. Like, what color's your Bugatti? Are you a top G? You know, at the end of the day, we've seen that this man has weird allegations all around him. And again, they're just allegations. But given that there's current investigations regarding human trafficking, given that, you know, it's gotten to the point where two countries have literally gotten involved, when you hear statements about, I'm moving to Romania because 40% of the reason is I, I, can, I, I don't have to deal with these legal huddle or hurdles that you would see in the United States or the United Kingdom or any country where corruption is not easy easier to access. Um, of course, you know, when you read things like that and you look at these videos where even in his BDSM scenarios, these women are locking doors and obviously being distraught, you have to imagine just how much you can respect the man. If that stuff sounds weird to you, the man's entire empire was built off webcamming and casinos. The man literally peddles filth and he peddles absolute addiction to individuals out there. People that he can absolutely defraud with parasocial relationships and addictive vices. This is not somebody that you can respect. What Andrew Tate is, is a pimp. And from his statements, it appears that he's aligned in some capacity with highly corrupt elements or even criminal elements. You can't respect a man like this. He has nothing to, this is not an alpha male. And anybody that thinks this is an alpha male just hasn't grown up enough. At the end of the day, this is a simple way for this man to sell courses. And, you know, banning Andrew Tate, obviously in the grand scheme of things, probably is important because it immediately curbs his spread. But Andrew Tate is not the only person in this. He's a cancer that is amongst a breed of cancers. This is part of the red pill community that a bunch of people subscribe to, a bunch of people go into, and they get their life learning from it. When in reality, these people just haven't gotten old enough to really see the world for what it is. Once you get past the age of 18, once you go to college, once you actually, or, or post-secondary or trade school or whatever, once you get a career, once you actually speak to multiple people and you develop and cultivate friendships, you'll find out just how bullshit Andrew Tate's things are, how Andrew Tate's experiences are, his lived-in experiences, the shit that he peddles onto the average person. Don't be wilded out that this is a simple man, all right, not a simple man, but this is a man that wants to find a way 
to get you funneled into a $50 program that ultimately nets him millions cumulatively a year after year. That's all it is. It's just a grift for a man to make money off of the complete stupid ones out there. 50 bucks is not a lot of money, even for a child who has mommy's credit card or daddy's credit card attached. 50 bucks to learn the secrets on getting rich and then not getting rich afterwards for the most part is something that uh, honestly will reflect badly on the people falling for it. But for Andrew, it's just more cream and money on top of the empire. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Tate is a disgusting, deplorable human being. And if you consider him an alpha male, I have simple words to offer you. And that's grow the fuck what you saw please like comment and subscribe dislike it if you dislike it i am out